Thailand's democracy being tested. The leader of the progressive political party that won a landslide victory in May sees parliament reject his bid for prime minister. Hidalin Jaronrat says he will re-strategize to get the majority of votes needed, but will military appointed senators allow him to take power? And how will the Thai people respond? I'm Andrea Sankey, and today's newsmaker is Thailand's democracy. The progressive Move Forward Party and its alliance partner, Po Thai, arguably humiliated conservative pro-military parties in Thailand's May election. But in order to become the country's next prime minister, leader, Pita Limjaronrat needed to get the support of more than half of the 749-member parliament. On Thursday, despite the backing of his eight-party alliance, he fell short of the required votes. I accepted that that uh, I couldn't reach 376. I got 324, and there's 200 abstains. Um, I also accepted that it's below expectations in the sense that a lot of people didn't come to become quorum as well as um, not voting as uh, they wish. And I understand that there's a lot of pressure on them as well as uh, several incentives that didn't allow them to vote uh, in alignment with the people. But I'm not giving up. Um, I'm going to strategize once again uh, to consolidate the uh, voice just to make sure that we reach 376 later on. Well, Thursday's vote was a critical test for PETA and his party's anti establishment agenda, which includes removing the military from politics, reforming Les Majestés laws, and curbing business monopolies. His determination to pursue Move Forward's agenda has put him at odds with a powerful network of conservatives and old money families that have loomed large over Thai politics for decades. But perhaps the biggest source of disagreement is PETA's campaign pledge to change the law that makes defaming the royal family punishable by up to 15 years in prison. And while his supporters say they are disappointed by the outcome of this week's vote, they remain hopeful he will eventually win. I feel sorry for him. I would like to see him pass the vote. I feel very disappointed. We come here because we love justice, but there is no justice in this country for a long time. The fact that he didn't get the votes make me sad. I really want him as prime minister. Honestly, I want the Move Forward party to take a step back in order to allow the country to move forward. I knew this would be the outcome if the winning party can step back a little. So it's not the end of the road for PETA, but as weeks pass, it appears to be getting more difficult. He's also facing two separate legal complaints against him. One accuses him of breaching election rules by owning shares in a media company. This week, that was referred to the Constitutional Court. The second complaint was filed by a lawyer who says his plan to reform the Les Majestés law amounted to an attempt to overthrow the government with the king as a head of state. And while PETA prepares to fight those cases as well as face another vote in Parliament, there are concerns that his strong voter base may take matters into their own hands. Yesterday we saw a subversion of a democratic outcome uh, enabled by the constitution that was drafted uh, under the military regime after the coup in 2014. This constitution is a straitjacket on Thai democracy. So will Peter take power, and if not, what then? Joining me now to debate that are all from Bangkok. Pong Tep Tepkanjana, he is Thailand's former justice minister and deputy prime minister. Kasit Piromya is a Democratic Party politician and former foreign minister for Thailand. And Sean Boon Prakong is a former advisor to the Thai government from 2011 to 2014. Thanks all so much for being with me. Given, yes, it is only the first rejection, let's put it that way, of, of this prime minister, but if he is not approved, was the election in May just a farce if you have the winner in a landslide victory stopped from becoming prime minister? Pong Tep, go ahead. Okay, when we compare uh, the winning of Move Forward this time, uh, move forward 
got a big win compared with uh, other political parties, but it is not a landslide like before. In the old time, uh, the Thai Rock Thai Party and uh, some other parties, the People Power Party, used to get almost half or more than half of the House of Representatives. This time, move forward came first, but of course, still far uh, from the majority of the House. Anyway, uh, it is considered a big win for move forward. And when move forward uh, could join with the second place party, the Thai party, altogether, uh, they gain more than half of the seats in the house, which normally, norm if normally uh, these two parties can form a government and Pita can become the next prime minister. Unfortunately, because of the constitution uh, drafted uh, under the sponsorship of the junta, mm -hmm. they allow appointed senators, 250 of them, uh, to vote with 500 MPs for the prime minister. And you need to get more than half of the 750 right. Indeed. seats. Let yeah, me ask, so, uh, right, which, and he's still short of that. Uh, but let me ask Sean his take on all of this. I mean, not off to the best start, but there's still, as we said, it's not the end of the road. There are still chances for PETA to find that majority somehow. But if he doesn't, if Parliament simply refuses him, what happens? And would you fear the consequences? I believe that it's likely he will not get the vote uh, he needs, uh, that there's not going to be that much change. He only barely get 15 votes, and he needs 51 more. And the next, uh, the, the, the next round of vote, the second one on the 19th, will not make that much of a difference. However, I feel, I feel like the fact that we haven't had uh, a, a truly elected uh, government for, for a long, long, long time that represent the people. So uh, I, I feel for the country in a sense that uh, a lot of 14 million are extremely agitated and want to take the street. And if the, the next pass, Pita doesn't get it, it doesn't look good. We can have to see what happened, but it would be a, a big showing by those who vote for the Me Forward parties. Yeah, we'll have to see what happens, but what is your gut feeling telling you as an analyst? I, I quite frankly, uh, protests in, in the street from time to time has been a part of Thai scenario, whether it's from Ed and PDRC. Uh, it's, it's, it's a Thai politic is, it has been this way. Uh, it's, it's, been, it's been colorful, it's been uh, but but at the end, uh, this conservative always have the upper hand. This is one of the few times that uh, after after eight years of, of of the coup going on nine years, people have high expectation. But mm. the uh, I'm 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 anxious to see what would really happen if he doesn't get the second vote on the 19th. Okay, Kasit, are are you as anxious and? Uh... What what do you think the actual alternatives are? If the parliament simply refuses, how will the public respond and who will step in? So the setting up of the nominated, selected senator of 250 was meant to support the conservative premier candidate. But the outcome of the general elections on the 14th of May went beyond expectation and so on. No one thought that the Move Forward Party would have gotten 14 million votes. Everyone thought that they could get at most maybe 10 million. And suddenly they became the biggest, the number one party with the largest number of votes. It upset that all the equation. So I think the conservative elements are trying very hard through the Senate to prevent 
Kun Pita from becoming the next Thai Prime Minister. Uh, sure, but then so the script what will that's being I think, do? written inside the cons yes. Well, in that sense, I think there will be, I mean, more series of uh, of what you call the parliamentary session to elect. It will go until I think to the end until everyone is exhausted. Then uh, there will be, I think, motion to have other candidates to be tabled to the parliament. Mm -hmm. And even in the constitution, it also stipulates that if you cannot find a sort of, uh, I think, the known candidates, then the parliament could have a vote in order to find an outsider to become a prime minister candidate. So, so just, there are several options available in the constitution. But you're more, li more likely expecting that they will just draw this out for as long as possible, kind of exhaust. Well, they have to, they have to be looking uh, through the window how much of the people will be, I think, rallying and protesting these very undemocratic activities and the un illiberal contents of the constitution. So politics will be, I think, uh, taking life inside the parliament and outside the parliament. And I agree with Kun Shon, that is the usual way that Thai have been, I think, participating in politics mm -hmm. because there is big discontentment, big disappointment. And I think the people being, uh, is uh, feeling that they're being cheated by the 250 senators or the conservative uh, establishment of Thailand. And if that cannot be solved in the parliament uh, through, I think, census and rationality, mm -hmm. then the street would have to go to politics. I would not be surprised. Okay. The people will not give up. They cannot be defeated mm -hmm. inside the parliament because they have won the, uh, the general elections on the 13th of May. Okay. And if people inside the parliament do not go along with the result of the elections, then I think it, it's it, the people have every right to protest and to say that whatever government that that doesn't come from the uh, parties that won the election will be illegitimate and illegal. Mm -hmm. They have the right to protest. Okay, uh, let me come back to Pong Tep though. We need to talk about who actually voted for and against making Peter prime minister in this round, and there are dozens who abstained or didn't actually show up to vote. Where are they Most of them and are senators. who are they? Yeah, go Most ahead. Most of them are senators. <laughs> Only one MP was hospitalized. Mm. The rest uh, who did not show up or, or were, were absent or take, took leave were senators. So next week, if there will be uh, an a motion for the election of the prime minister again. If the coalition parties uh, do not bring in new additional parties, we can expect the same result. Is that Pita really an option though? Again. What other parties could, could the coalition bring in? They have eight already. That's, that's a huge... There, there are only two parties which can fill in the gap. Uh, Pum Jai Thai has 71 MPs. Uh, mm -hmm. Pita lack about 51 votes. Pum Jai Thai can fill the gap, but it is unlikely, very unlikely, that Pum Jai Thai will join Pita led coalition government mm -hmm. because of the Leste Majeste issue. Uh, they clearly, one of their MPs uh, spoke clearly in the parliament yesterday. Mm -hmm. So it is very unlikely that Pum Jai Thai will join. Okay. For Palang Pacharat, they have about 40 MPs and they also have supporting senators. Unfortunately, mm. Palang Pacharat is led by General Prawit and move forward said that if there, is, if there are Prawit and Prayut, there will be no move forward. Okay. So they cannot invite Palang Pacharat uh, to join. In that case, I see no chance of the getting enough votes for Pita to become the next prime minister. Okay. Uh, Sean, let me ask you, though, I was actually asking more specifically about how this many were allowed to uh, abstain or just not show up to vote. There's also the question about the 13 military appointed sen senators that did vote for Pita. Why did they take what many would consider a huge political risk for themselves. Why did they have the courage to vote for him while the others did not? And why did so many run away? Well, the way I see it, 
uh, those 13 for a little bit more progressive elements of the uh, senator. The uh, previously during the the sound out, move forward also has played a lot of psychological game of announcing that a hundred a uh, hundred senators would support them, but at the end, when when the vote came, it's only 15. But there's also off a lot of abstention uh, involved. So, but for the next round, move forward, we'll have a problem. For the first session, we have no other candidate, competing candidate. And there are vibes that General Perwitt might contest. And that could change a little bit more dynamics in, in, in as far as uh, according to this uh, current constitution, we are under 2020 and 17 constitution. Minority government was capable of of being the government with the support of the majority of the Senate. If 250 senators decided to vote for the coalition of the previous government, yes, we have to look at that second option as a possibility, and the conservative might come back and rule the government again. So here we have the second scenario that most, most could happen. And we, we don't want to rule anything out. And this could precipitate uh, a lot of move forward party to take the street. And mm -hmm. I, I hope that we, we could come up with a reasonable so solution, but the projection of the political direction is moving in that direction. Kasit, if you had a comment on that analysis, go ahead. If I, not... I have a comment. I have a comment on this that the 13 senator who voted for Kun Pita, they were thinking and taking into consideration the 14 million votes given to the move forward and the other 10 million votes given to the per Thai. So a combined 25 million votes is the voice of the people, is the mandate from the people, and I'm. I am quite sure that the 13 senators were thinking about this and then they changed their mind or they resisted the pressure of not voting for Kun Pita. And today we are on the 14th of July. We still have a couple more days before the 19th of July. I still have that guts, you know, sixth sense instinct feeling mm. that there will be more senators who think about the 25 million votes as the most important thing for the kingdom of Thailand and will change their vote. And I think they will go for Kun Pita. I still retain that hope, that wish, and that dream that senators will come to their senses and walk along with the people. <laughs> 25 million votes casted on the 13th of May. I, I'm not if an optimist. Then but... everyone will be right. responsible for the street politics for the upheavals, for the economic, social, and political instability. Sean, I know you feel you're it's not uh, that optimistic, to, but, to the uh, dance. but more. In Sean's opinion, he thinks he's just being realistic, at least. But uh, no, it's good to hear, Kasi, that you think there is that option. Uh, because there are other issues at play as well, not just you know the military-appointed senators keeping Pita out of office, but there's also the question of whether he can be disqualified. We know complaints have been filed. One has been saying his plan to reform uh, the Les Majeste law is basically an attempt to overthrow the government with the king as head of state. Another complaint uh, with the Constitutional Court alleges that he never qualified as a candidate because he owns shares in a media company. Do you think anything will come of those complaints filed to have him entirely disqualified? Can I, I don't go think. First? Uh, they, uh, uh, go ahead, Chen. Chen, Chen. Can, can I? Yeah, uh, I don't think uh, he can be disqualified before the next round of vote, uh, because the constitutional court will have not enough time uh, mm. to decide his case, his two cases. Uh, but right now there are movement uh, to try to prevent Pitka from being proposed for the prime minister again. Uh, some senators uh, right now are trying to cite some rules uh, in the parliamentary in the parliamentary rules that he cannot be proposed again. But I'm I'm pretty sure that finally uh, he can be proposed. Uh, but I am not as optimistic as Minister Kasit. 
Okay. I think if we do if, if we do if if we do things the same, we cannot expect different result. So without mm -hmm. the inclusion of additional new parties, uh, it is very very unlikely that we will have the next prime minister uh, next week. Okay, so uh, you, you insist, Pong Tep, on additional new parties. Sean, let me ask you, though, is there perhaps an opportunity here? We actually heard from a Thai voter that this should be considered. Should Pita step back slightly on the Les Majeste reforms that he promised to get the additional parliamentary votes needed? I mean, then we can assume he can, if he gets the parliamentary votes, he can begin once he's brought in to change the system from within. And maybe, I don't know, possibly go to a referendum on the Les Majeste reform laws he, he wants to, to change. Crafty move from those who propose. But uh, if, if it's really, really happened, and, and uh, one of the uh, influential Pup Jatai party has put on a public record, but I really don't believe that. But to me, the fact that 250 senators, uh, they were appointed by by the military, and it was incredible that that 15 came out and 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 voted, and so. But uh, I think it's a it's a case of uh, irresistible force meaning immovable object. Uh, so the next the next move after after the next round of vote, of course, uh, for the third time there has been suggestion that uh, the the. The uh, move forward should indefinitely keep on proposing until several more months on Mr. Pita, but also there's a second school of thought that would would like Okutai to to have a second shot. And we know after this uh, second vote if if there's a, a public uh, impact on this. But it's, it's unlike unlike the past. Social media has tremendous amount of of impact. Upon the public pressure, especially uh, part of the reason why move forward what a big, uh, big win is is they consider uh, social media access where the kids has a mobile, and that message go through, and therefore the public pressure to make to make it uh, the, the the dynamics of uh, of of what's happening here, the, the public pressure upon. Upon the the ruling, the conservative factors right. are tremendous, but we we never really really know if if uh, a move forward would be satisfied with not getting not getting the option on the second pass. Mm. So we okay. have to wait and see. I mean, we have to be fair and admit that often the voice of the people, even in leading democracies, sometimes the popular vote doesn't always prevail because of how politics works. So I'll come back to Kasid. If there is an opportunity for political maneuvering here and playing politics, we know Pita had promised the public that a huge part of his platform would be this reform, les majestés. But if there is an opportunity for him to lighten up a little bit on that reform that's so controversial for so many people, step back a bit. Do you think he could gain more votes in the parliament to push his prime ministerialship th prime ministership through? I don't think Kun Pita will sell his soul. Mm. Just in simply to become the prime minister and, and cut out, bow down to the conservative pressure. He has to go all the way because he has to think about the 14 and the 25 million voters. And he can wait because he's still young. He can look into politics in the medium and long term. All of those conservative elements, including those that went to the election commission to petition about his asset and all of this and so on, are all people. Mm. You know, they are out of touch, out of tune, and their petitions and their arguments are, uh, I think, a reflection of ill will and jealousy and fear of losing their privileged position. I am sure that Kun Pita will stand firm with the people, with the votes, with the principle. Okay. He will not back down. Okay, Kasit. I, 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 I agree that uh, Kun Pita will stand firm 
and even if he if even if he decides to to step back he will not get enough vote anyway so i'm pretty okay. sure that he will stand firm well, that will have to be the final word. Uh, we will have to see what develops over the uh, weeks and months to come, and we'll be keeping our eye on Thailand, and I'm sure checking in with all of you uh, in the near future. But uh, for now, uh, we'll have to wrap it up. I'd like to thank all three of my panelists as well as our viewers so much for watching. Remember, you can follow us on Twitter, and do be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Andrea Sankey. We'll see you next time.